This is Pam Westra. She's the owner of uh, Tiny Dakes Lakeshore here in Muskegon. I'm Rachel with Rentals with Rachel. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the Tiny Digs Lakeshore project and why uh, Pam chose Muskegon to invest in. So to start off, tell me a little bit about what inspired you to create such a place. Well, we already have a Tiny Digs Hotel in Portland, Oregon. But 10 years ago when the tiny house movement took off um, pretty rapidly, as m many people know, there was probably like seven TV shows at one time about tiny houses. But... Um, we went to Portland, Oregon. Our son was living there, but um, the tiny house movement kind of sprung up from Portland, Oregon. And so they were very tiny house friendly there. It didn't take long to get through the governmental entities um, to get approved to have a hotel there. There was already one there. And uh, so it only took us about three months to get approved out there. So my son and I just always loved tiny house stuff. And my husband grew up kind of in the building world, but that's not wasn't his profession at the time. And uh, but he grew up in the building world, and our son was in the trades too. So we built all our tiny houses, and um, we have twelve in Portland, Oregon, and we have the seven here. But West Michigan is our home, so it inspired us to come home here. And we saw that the tiny house movement was kind of had the epicenter of Portland, Oregon, and then it kind of spread out around the nation, but mainly on the coastal states is where it spread to. There's a lot of tiny house communities now and a lot of other tiny house hotels or campground kind of things or the glamping that's come uh, full steam ahead too. And um, so we just love creating. And so um, these are just really fun. We make all our tiny houses a different theme in each one of them. And so it is just a fun project to do because it gets our creative juices going. You'll see in a lot of the houses, there's custom built doors uh, for the bathrooms and um, just for space saving, there's sliding doors. Um, we do interesting things with the railings and the loft rails in the tops. Uh, this one looks like a little picket fence up here uh -huh. for the garden house. And so they're just a lot of fun and um, we enjoy. We're the whole family is kind of creative and artistic, and so we just enjoy doing it. So Okay. Yep. And I believe at one point you shared with me that you um, got into this here in Muskegon through a contest with um, Airbnb. The contest wasn't what inspired the Muskegon um, development. What inspired the Muskegon development is this is home. West Michigan is home, and we wanted to come home. And But I did win a contest with Airbnb. It was called the OMG Fund Contest. And um, that contest culminated at the end of 2022. I won $100,000 for my design that I came up with. They asked for very unique and unusual designs of projects. It's very different than what we've done so far. Um, these are all tiny houses on wheels that are two developments so far. Um, the one that I won the contest for, it's called The Hive. It's in Luther, Michigan. It's not complete yet. We have about two-thirds of the interior of the house to complete. It was a very labor-intensive project. It's called The Hive because it looks like a skep beehive from like medieval times. Um, beekeepers used these baskets that were a dome. So there's a, a building a process called super adobe sandbag construction. And that's what we use to build the hive because then it looked like a skep. It's all ready to go on the exterior. We have to finish the interior this summer. But um, that was a yeah. fun project. Mm -hmm. Airbnb knows that experiential travel is what people are looking for. Mm -hmm. And by experiential travel, they have a whole division of their company where you can um, take a cooking class or learn how to weave or... Um, and then there's their categories of different places you can stay now. They have, do you want to stay in a yurt? Do you want to stay in a tiny house? Mm -hmm. Do you want to stay in a log cabin? Do you want to stay in a dome? Um, there's all these little categories because they know experiential travel is what people have been looking for the last few years. Mm -hmm. It's like the up and coming division of the travel industry. 
So. Right. I've been hearing that they the more unique your stay is, yeah. the more people want to check it out. Right. And right. obviously the tiny homes are definitely mm -hmm. unique and not yeah. something that everybody has experience with. But right. like you mentioned, they may have seen it on television. Right. Right. And they're intrigued by it. Yeah. Yeah. So was the process trying to get into Muskegon in terms of going through all the zoning and all the building requirements? How was that for you? Um, the city was very excited to have tiny houses here. Mm. Um, there had been a um, consultant that the city, different cities hire consultants to come in, evaluate their city, decide what the city needs to augment what's already there. And um, the consultant told the city of Muskegon, you need more lodging um, and you need some tiny houses. Mm -hmm. So when we approached them, they were pretty excited about us coming home and doing this idea here. And mm -hmm. we were pretty excited. We already have what the city calls their little chalets in the shopping district downtown. And mm -hmm. their little buildings with little unique shops in them. Mm -hmm. So when we saw that those had occurred here, that's when we went and approached the city. And um, so we hope to bring more um, tiny house development to the Midwest. The Midwest, of course, is a little bit slower. You know, we all know all trends and fads start on the coastal states, mainly mm -hmm. start in California. It takes us probably eight, 10 years to catch up in the Midwest a little bit sometimes. And um, so those kind of trends um, are now coming to the Midwest for tiny houses, and we want to be in the forefront of that movement here and mm -hmm. um, get uh, tiny house communities approved in the Midwest. Um, mm -hmm. There's not many. There's one going in in Sturgis, Michigan right now. It got approved last fall, and so we're pretty excited to see that happen in the Midwest. So. Do you have plans to expand into another location? Um, right now we have plans to finish this and finish the hive and then we'll see what happens after that. Yeah. We have a lot of fun ideas for different places, um, different creations, so to speak. I have my Pinterest page is full of different ideas that I'd like to do eventually. Uh, this project, we have seven houses here at Tiny Digs Lakeshore. There's a house next door that we own also. It will be set up um, for handicap accessible unit in there. It's a duplex, uh, 100 year old home. And um, the backyard has been set up also for two more tiny houses back there. So we still have those to build and to finish the house and the house is next on the agenda. And then we have to finish the hive project too so, and get that up on the Airbnb site and renting that. Sure. So. So Muskegon is not necessarily known as a vacation destination to a lot of people, right. but it has been trying to pivot and change its image. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what, other than the fact that you're from the area, what drew you to invest in Muskegon? Well, we have said for years and years, ever since the downturn in the 70s of the economy in Michigan, when the auto industry kind of went overseas, that downturn created quite an economy crunch here in Muskegon. We were very dependent on the auto industry here and a few other bigger industries that downsized, pivoted, went to different kinds of things. Um, and so it's in flux, it has been in flux for 50 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, we kept saying it's such a gem. We have Pier Marquette Park four minutes down the street here on Lake Michigan, mm -hmm. the beautiful state park. And um, then we have Muskegon Lake is right across the street from us here. And it's a huge, beautiful lake that has a channel that goes out into Lake Michigan. So bigger boats can come in and out of the channel and visit. We have a bunch of marinas across the street. And we said, Muskegon is just a gem waiting to happen. Hmm. Um, they've put a lot of development into our downtown area. And then our little district of Lakeside here, it's pretty cute. Around different pockets of Muskegon, there's these little neighborhoods. And this is a little neighborhood with a shopping district in it. We have um, bars, we have restaurants, um, we have a distillery here on the street. We have um, gourmet little shops like the party store next door, Gezi's, has great products, gourmet products. We have the meat market down the street, Mom's Meats, um, candy shops, you know, old fashioned 50s styles candy in it. Um, the ferry boat comes in four blocks from here mm -hmm. and from Wisconsin. So um, we said, wow, you know, this is a great neighborhood. And um, Muskegon is just starting to bloom heavily with its tourist industry. Um, I've heard 
that we've even surpassed some of our neighboring towns that have always been known for being the touristy place to go. Mm -hmm. Those people that even live in those towns are starting to come be tourists up here eight miles away mm -hmm. um, to see Muskegon now. Yeah. So it's, Great. it's really growing. The downtown area has tons of restaurants and, and uh, nightlife kind of places too. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Were there any um, challenges to creating a tiny home community, either in the construction or even in just, you know, publicizing yourself and getting yeah. out there and being known as, mm -hmm. for what this is here? Yeah. Um, well, we're still trying to get our name out there uh, and be known and let people know that there is a tiny house hotel to stay in in Muskegon. And um, the city, you know, welcomed us with open arms. Did take a few months to get some uh, some entities of the city on board with us, and that delayed the project a little bit. But we've been moving right along, and we're now on a lot of different platforms to get our name out there. And now that you know, we opened right at the beginning of last summer, so we missed being in a lot of summer publications to advertise. So we're getting on board with those too, so people will know that we're here this year. Talk a little bit about uh, what inspires you for the design. You mentioned that every single unit is different mm -hmm. and you've done some different uh, unique aspects like the doors and mm -hmm. the, um, the railings for the mm -hmm. upstairs. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, is there a particular yeah. challenge with even finding furniture that fits? Uh, it can be challenging sometimes. Um, we, you know, look at things that are tinier to fit in a tiny home. These are tiny houses. They're only 20 foot long. Uh, they, Most people wouldn't live in one this small, but this is just a vacation spot. You're not looking for a lot of storage. Um, after building a few of them, we realized we needed to do some different things with stairways, and the stairways do take up a lot of room um, because you are constrained to such a small area. Um, when you're constructing them, you have to think about where the water is going to move through the walls. And so that can be kind of challenging sometimes too. And, and you're constrained. People don't realize when they come sometimes, the sleeping main sleeping area is in the lofts. And the lofts are small purposely because they're tiny houses on wheels. There's a 13-6 height minimum or maximum that you can do to go down the road with a tiny house. You can't mm. be really tall so that there's a stand up upstairs area in these because these are not on a foundation, they're on wheels. And so um, we have constraints. They're eight and a half foot wide so they can go down the road easier. Mm. Um, that's the maximum width for going down the road without a permit. So that's what these are on the exterior. Okay. And so, um, yeah. And would you recommend doing a project like this to other people? Oh, yeah. I, I just think other people uh, have different creativity juices in them, too. And um, I actually have a good friend that wants to even do an A-frame project here in Muskegon. Well, Norton Shores, just around the block, um, just outside the Muskegon city limits. But um, there's other developments around, and, um, you know, the more the merrier the more people get to know them, the more they'll enjoy coming and experiencing it. So, mm -hmm. kids really like these too. So uh, they're almost like a like a dollhouse yeah. in a lot of ways. Yeah, yeah. they are. Um, yeah. I was going to ask you what kind of comments you receive from guests yeah. about the experience. Um, they're very. I've had people stand in our driveway out in Portland, especially, um, and, and stand there and do like a happy dance in the driveway and squeal and holler. Um, because they're just so excited to come see the tiny houses. Mm -hmm. They see a lot of our um, videos on YouTube, and um, they're just ready to come and experience these. Um, some people come because they want to experience a tiny house. They're thinking about perhaps living in one, and they want to see if, if it's something that they could maybe do. Um, other people are just coming for ideas, and purposely we've done roof lines, uh, very different one from the other, especially in Portland. I think every roof line out there is totally different. Here we kind of did a couple of each model that we were developing here because we wanted to get them done a little faster. And um, so they look different on the inside. Outside, a couple of them look a little bit the same, but um, 
people come to look at, there's different building materials in Portland, especially we've used old shingle roofs on some of those. We've used um, uh, arched roofs. So we had to put on this, like a film over top of the roof of rubberized a membrane. Hmm. Uh, some of them have corrugated metal on them. Some of them have the raised seam metal on them. So you can come and see different materials that you might use to build a tiny house if you're interested in building one too, because mm -hmm. one is very different from the other usually. So Sure. So if, as an investor, um, would you say that it's been a solid investment? Would you say that it's too soon to tell? Where are you at with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, last year was too soon to tell because we didn't have our publications out there for us yet. We had a good summer. Um, we are doing more promotion to get the name out there. And um, I think it will be a good investment. We uh, think Muskegon is really ripe for investment. There's a lot going on in Muskegon. Um, it's growing really fast. I think it's one of the fastest growing cities in Michigan right now. And so, uh, and it's, you know, reinventing itself more as a touristy place because of all the great outdoor activities mm -hmm. here and the beauty that's here and um, the history that's here. And so there's lots and lots of history in Muskegon. And so I think it's a really good place to invest, not only for a business, but um, just to live here, housing is less expensive mm -hmm. than a lot of our neighboring bigger towns. Right. We have a lot of people coming from the Grand Rapids and um, south of here, Grand Haven, Spring Lake area, coming to this area because housing is less expensive here. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. yeah, great. It's a, I think it's a great place to invest in a business, too, because it is growing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, thank you so much for talking to me yeah. about this. We'll make sure and have lots of great images in here to, for people to check it out. Great. Thanks, so, Rachel. Yeah. All right.